Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Virtual Student Experiences Season 3. Today's webinar will be a webinar focused on photography and media. If you're new to our program, Virtual Student Experiences, or VSC, is a pro bono initiative spearheaded for students by students. We at VSC want to be the inspiration for aspiration, and our goal is to give students around the world an opportunity to hear from professionals in their career area of interest in a friendly and casual setting. If you're a student that knows what you want to do in the future, we at VSC want to encourage, allow, and connect you with professionals. Through VSC, students are given the chance to decide if their career area of interest really fits their skills, personality, and overall interest. Through VSC, you'll be able to hear from a wide variety of guests from a variety of seniority levels. To find out more information about VSC or to sign up to be notified about upcoming webinars, you can visit our website at virtualstudentexperiences.com. Our guest today is Ms. Madison Stringfellow. Ms. Stringfellow started her career journey early on in mid-2014. Since then, she has built a large portfolio for photos from over 400 photo shoots that she has done. Her portfolio contains portraits, lifestyle shoots, and brand content shots. In addition to her impressive portfolio, Ms. Stringfellow is also a published author of a book called Compass Diaries, where she talks about her travels and the world. She has been to over 29 countries and counting, um, and we are very lucky to have her here today. So thank you for being with us uh, here today, Ms. Stringfellow. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to get started. Awesome. So just the first question, can you kind of, from your perspective, tell us a little bit about what photography really is and kind of how you got into that field? So there's a lot of different ways that you could take photography. I am personally in portraits, but I will always love landscapes and you can go to photojournalism and street photography. And it's really about just capturing moments, capturing milestones for people, events, family photos. It's all about preserving time and making people look and feel their best, whether it be for their business, for their engagement, for their high school graduation, college graduation. It's just all milestones and really connecting with other people, giving people the experience. When you're a photographer doing a photo shoot, you're not just providing photos, you are providing an experience for them. Great. And then can you kind of Tell us where your passion for photography began. So where did your interest really spark into a flame per se? <laughs> so I always loved cameras since I was a little kid. I would steal my mom's little digital camera and pose my dolls and call it professional pictures. And I just loved the way that you could put people in a beautiful scene, whether it be a garden or the ocean or the mountains, and you just capture them looking their absolute best with that clean cut, but pose, the lighting is perfect photo. So I got myself a camera in the eighth grade and I would take it to school and ask people if they wanted their photo taken. Kind of looked at me like I was crazy or weird. Some people thought it was cool, but I just, I wanted to take pictures of everybody and everything. And I thought, nobody, everybody's changing. Everything's changing so fast. We need to save these times. And so by high school, I was moving on to doing more professional photos for my friends. I would do their senior portraits. I had friends that were getting into modeling. So we would have some fun with that. We'd get very artistic, very creative. And I decided to make an Instagram and start putting these portraits. And we would, we would pull inspiration from big magazines like Vogue and we would try to do up these different moods and that's that's another thing with photography is you can tell a story you can create a mood it's really limitless and it's everything is unique as a creative like you can't really copy someone else's work you can be inspired but you can't copy them so anyway I started getting requests, more and more and more requests for portraits. Can you do my picture? Can you do my picture? My family wants their photo taken. And that's when it sparked into a little business. At about 16 years old, I was charging about $30 a photo shoot. And I was just, I thought it was a dream come true at that point. And it snowballed like anything in life does. You realize you like something, you're good at something, so it inspires you to get better and better. And it led me down the path of 
seven years into a business where I've worked in several major cities across America, and it is now my full-time job as a photographer. Awesome. And then can you maybe touch on any special steps or requirements that you had to meet, or maybe there aren't any, so can you maybe speak a little bit about that? So there's a, there's a couple different paths you can take. There are plenty of certification courses. Um, community colleges offer two-year degrees. You can meet specific requirements and make that paper resume, or you can always be a freelancer and go off on your own. So if you wanted to self-educate, um, there are online courses that you can take on your own time. There is YouTube. My biggest recommendation, it may sound cheesy, but is to just get a camera and a manual and just start playing around with it. And they say your first 10,000 photos are your worst. So just start going at it. Just start clicking everything you see. Um, I wouldn't put requirements on creativity. I think that if you enjoy what you're doing and other people like it, it's kind of a subjective field. Like there isn't, it isn't um, a career path like engineering or becoming a doctor where you do have to meet exact requirements. You just go and present your best self and present your best work and let your business or your, if you want to do journalism, your name, your portfolio, you let it build. And I, I did not meet any specific requirements. I just started accepting every opportunity that fit me and it led to more opportunities um, you can you can also contract you can be a freelancer and contract so i've contracted with a few jobs as a yearbook photographer and i'm with another company but other than that it, it is really your portfolio is your resume and that is the only requirement i recommend is just practicing 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 and building your portfolio Cool. Um, and then we spoke about this a little at the beginning, but is there like a special eye that you have to have, a special kind of perspective that you have on the world um, when, when becoming a photographer? So kind of in other words, are photographers born or made, or is it kind of like somewhere in between on, on a spectrum? I think it's somewhere in between. I think if, if you have interest, it can be nurtured, but there is also part where like any artist you know, musician writers you can practice all you want but there is that little bit of creativity that comes naturally personally I believe you have to romanticize life and the world around you to catch things that a photographer catches because you, there's so much going on and that they call it the eye because you, you see things within a scene and whether it be you're staging a person and then you find that one spot you're like this is the spot with the light you have to you have to meet, see light in the way that other people don't see light and position at certain angles to create the best frame and i think that that can be taught but it's also something that comes natural to the creative brain so i i, I believe that you have to have an eye but i also believe that if you're thoroughly interested in anything that you set your mind to you can also learn and get the hang of it right um and then with social media and thousands of new influencers per year how do you really make yourself um, stand out as a creator how do you make yourself different from the other people that will really catch people's attention you just have to be authentic. I mean, there, there is no way around it. If you try to copy all these influencers and what they're doing, you'll, you'll drown in the noise. Um, but if you stick to your guns with what you feel is your best, your best work, your best creativity, and you just are consistent and keep putting work out there, um, there are social media techniques, like you could use the hashtags, you can tag to get featured on bigger platforms so that it draws to your social media platforms. But ultimately people want new content. They want unique things. Um, even if you had just a different color scheme going on, like a preset scheme aesthetic, um, people buy into that. I would just say, don't, 
don't try to copy anybody else. Just go with your gut. Um, not everybody's going to like everything, but as long as you're being authentic, it, you'll get the attention that you need. And I'm not, I am not a huge influencer by any means, but I do well for the small business aspect. So don't let your follower count or your like count or anything get in the way of your motivation for creativity because it's, you can do pretty well for yourself. Right. Um, and then you've kind of spoken how you forged your own path, um, how you've kind of nurtured your, cre- your creativity. So can you maybe speak a little bit about what role education has played in your success? So is it really important to go to a name school or to get good grades? Or does maybe education teach you a certain extent what creativity is and like kind of how to increase your creativity, if that kind of makes sense? Education pushes your boundaries. It makes you do things that you don't want to do. It makes you do things you think you can't do. And I think that it's helped me. I personally have hopped around to three different schools and I changed majors three times. So I I don't think that you have to follow one set path or you're doomed for failure if you deviate a little bit. I think education is about becoming a well-rounded person and exploring your interests, exploring who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses. And what college courses have pulled my weaknesses out of me, especially in writing creativity field, and that spotlight never would have been like on my weaknesses if it wasn't for college. So it, it, it pushes you and creativity is, I've, I've become creative in college with um, time management, kind of links over to that. Um, but I, I definitely believe that education, regardless of your major, regardless of your timeline, you can't go wrong with the networking opportunities and room for expansion and build. Cool. Um, and then can you also speak about some of the things that you did in college that helped you maybe prepare for your first few jobs? Um, not necessarily things that you learned, but maybe opportunities that you were presented from um, as a result of college. So I was presented with mentors that I otherwise wouldn't have had if I didn't go away to college. And they prepared me to go out there and put myself out there. Um, I I didn't have the confidence that I had two two years before I started with my university. But because you have people that are so much more successful than you and that have lived life and gone after their career, they can give you life advice and tips that nobody else can in any field of your career. And I wouldn't have landed contracts with certain companies around America if it wasn't for the mentors that I connected with at my university. Right. Um, awesome. So can you also maybe touch a little bit about your experience shooting over four, 400 photo shoots? So kind of what are your takeaways from that? Um, kind of maybe how you progress through that, how you keep building that clientele um, and stuff like that. Okay. So 400 photo shoots, I, I look back and I can't believe it's been that many. Um, it definitely was off to a slow start. And I look at photos from last week to photos from seven years ago, and I can see a big difference, a big comparison, lots of growth. Um, the, it's just the quality is increased. I've changed cameras throughout then. And the, the takeaway from 400 photo shoots is the fact that I have had the opportunity to interact with 400 clients. And that, that's a really interesting thing to wrap my brain around. Um, and I, I would say that that is the most valuable marketing technique is just momentum because I, word of mouth is extremely powerful and it goes a really long way. So after 400 photo shoots, I feel I've created a solid foundation of past clients, potential clients and skill that I didn't have before. Great. Um, And then can you also maybe speak a little bit about your time as an author writing um, the book Compass Diaries? Yes. So I I spent three years on that project. Um, 
a few days after I turned 18, I set out to Australia and I started writing, started writing about everything um, that I saw, everything I heard, everything I experienced. And I kept a diary for two years through 20 countries across several continents. I moved to Los Angeles and I, I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote as if it were a diary. Um, I would spend hours and hours and hours writing, editing, revising, and hiring editors to look over my work. I spent about two years of writing a book and then one year of editing, a whole year of editing. Um, and I released it in July of 2019. So that, that was, uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey internally because it's, it's a big deal to publish a book, but I, I published a diary. I think it was, it was my life and a memoir. So it, it's been, I, I, I'm so grateful for these opportunities to come and my starting my career as an author. Um, but it was, it was an emotional roller coaster in every dimension, completing a project that personal and that, that long to have completed a project after three years is a very gratifying feeling. Yeah, congratulations, by the way, on, on finishing that book and publishing it. That's, I appreciate it. That's very cool. Um, and then maybe can you speak a little bit about editing um, and how that plays into photography? To what extent maybe does it alter or change a photo or does it do something else? Can, can you speak a little bit about that? So post-processing is probably the biggest part of being a photographer. Um, I would say it's two thirds of the final photo. And the beauty of that is you could go to the extremes of changing an entire color scheme, manipulating skin tones and creating different beauty features. But the best part is, for, for example, you can manipulate light and keep it in a realistic way. So if I was taking a photo, I took a, I did a proposal shoot, a surprise proposal shoot, and they wanted the sunset in the background. Well, what happens is when you're shooting on raw in the camera, the subjects, the people are going to be extremely dark, 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 so like that you can't see, but you'll get that glowy sunset in the background. So when I take that photo and put it in the post-processing, I've learned techniques to bring up the shadows and focus in the subjects and bring down the highlights so that the background and the foreground are now even tones. And they look, they look like this dreamy painting photo. And then there, there's a lot of different sharpening techniques to kind of bring out the grain that happened from a low light photo. So there's, there's a lot of really cool surreal scenes that you can capture and heighten. Everything is heightening. I like to call it enhancements because the original photo is already beautiful, but now you're enhancing it, not in an unrealistic way, but just in a very appealing, color popping, vibrant way. And I, I've received um, flattery from my edits. So I've had people come back and go, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Or, you fixed my skin tone. Now I don't look so red because it was so, and it's, it's very nice to do because, it's, but the, the thing is, it's taken me years to build the confidence to know, okay, I took the original photo and it doesn't, it doesn't look that good right now on the camera, but I know in my head, oh, it's fine. I know exactly what I'm going to do to make the photo look amazing. Post -process. That's really cool. Um, and then maybe kind of sidetrack um can you maybe talk about a story or maybe the coolest moment on, on the job the moment you remember most um for positive reasons oh my gosh wow okay that one i wasn't ready for that one because there's so many different scenarios um could, could i categorize some moments yeah okay so i events were probably the most fun to be part of people's weddings or baby showers or bar mitzvahs because you the coolest thing is just being a part of somebody's special moment like you're a stranger and you're watching this person's entire life in front of you 
and their friends and family and they're entrusted you to capture these moments forever for them and, and then you're welcomed into the group and before you know it you're you're celebrating this life with people that you didn't know that morning and I would say that that's the coolest thing about photography is being able to witness the most special parts of people's lives that I that were strangers at the beginning of the event and it's it's just um, it goes unmatched so I would categorize events to be the best most positive experience as a photographer witnessing those special times that, that's really interesting that's that sounds very special too um so maybe can you also speak about your top three skills that you use every day so maybe kind of on the job or just um editing maybe maybe just photography like what are the top three skills that that you use throughout the day as a photographer as a photographer or just in daily life to help um facilitate growth um as a photographer so just okay. centered on photography but just in general okay so i i consider this a skill because i've had to teach myself and make it a skill over the years but organization every single day time whether it be time management organizing my equipment to make sure the my memory cards are fresh and have space on them my batteries are charged all my lenses are clean and everything i would say between editing photos to make sure they are available to the clients on the projected due date um sorting them in photos making sure the equipment is okay answering emails time management organization organization skills are something that i use every single day um, I also use like the technical skills of the equipment on the job as a photographer. I'm constantly, I shoot in manual, I shoot in raw. So I'm constantly playing around with refreshing my memory of histograms and setting aperture and the ISO. So I, I'm constantly dealing with equipment, switching out lenses for what I feel would be the best frame for the particular scene or the particular headshot. And then I, I would say editing would be the third skill in my daily life as a photographer. Um, I'm constantly exploring new editing techniques. I've developed a few presets over a few months um, that I can kind of eyeball a raw format and see that preset would sync well with that format and then maybe do some separate adjustments on the composition. But I just organization time management technical equipment skills and creative editing skills are the top three that I use in my life. Great. Um, and then can you maybe speak about where you see photography going or how you see photography evolving um, from before the pandemic um, and into the future? So I think that I think that it is going to become valuable um in a lot of aspects i am personally like i said working in events portrait brand content which i feel will always be valuable because people had a lot of their life moments robbed of them in 2020 whether it be graduation or a wedding that they couldn't be there for so these things have been postponed and I think that the demand for photographers for family events and life events will stay the way that it is. However, in a branch of photography that I am not currently in, but I'm hoping to dabble in one day, photojournalism branch, I think that that is going to take off more than it ever has before. Because the way that the world is moving with technology, um, I think that there's going to be more things happening that need coverage and there's going to be more photojournalists that go out there and tell the tell these stories we need we need authentic stories um to kind of share outside of the major news outlets so i i feel that this field will have value for the next few decades at least <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool um and then I guess, can you maybe talk about courses or clubs that can help students um, get ready for a career in photography or nurture a career in photography or an interest in photography? And then kind of 
is there a typical path that a successful photographer takes? So for courses, um, there, there is a lot of online options that you can do in your own time. There's Photoshop courses, Photography 101. There, I just saw a wonderful course. Um, I can't remember the name of the website. Greatcourses.com, I believe. But it was about teaching you to how to have the eye and how to tell the story. So there was that aspect of photography. Um, as for clubs, if your high school or college offers a photography club, which I know a lot of them do, that does not hurt to join the club and to get to know other photographers and exchange tips and look at each other's gear. You go out, if you set a project, if you can come up with the most creative image for this specific topic or this scene, that's always good to keep the wheels spinning. I'm personally part of Facebook groups too especially during COVID, um, a lot of like in-person courses and clubs got shut down. So I, I've definitely been on the virtual side of it. Uh, even just starting with a Facebook group, even if you're, you're too shy to post your own work, you can see other photographers work and they give feedback. Uh, there is a platform called The Hub that you can upload your work and you can choose to put it willingly on a critique, critique corner where other artists will go in and respectfully tell you how you can do better. You, you can comment on other artists' work. Um, there's another online club called UPIC that you can upload your images and like and share. And so I think that there's a, there is a lot of um, virtual courses and virtual clubs that can be joined, especially during COVID. But if your high school is offering, uh, it wouldn't hurt to try. There's, I would also look into local town clubs. A lot of towns have photography clubs, creatives. They'll do, they'll combine photographers, models, and makeup artists, and they'll do collaboration events. So you can show up with your camera, and there's seven models that are styled, and it's a free, it's a collaboration event, and that's how I have gathered images from my portfolio throughout doing collaboration events and meeting with local photographers. Those sound like some awesome resources and opportunities. Um, and, and lastly, um, just to close it off, are there any suggestions or words of wisdom that you would like to give students or aspiring photography professionals? Um, let me think about that. So I would just say Focus first on your work. Focus on channeling your creativity. Focus on your confidence. Because sometimes your best pieces are you're scared to share them because they are so raw or they're so personal. But definitely overcome fear of putting yourself out there. If you're a creative in any field, you are putting you, a part of you, on display. So I would definitely focus on your work. But for inspiring photographers that want to make a living, you also have to become a marketer. So I would highly, highly, highly suggest penciling in your marketing skills, SEO, building a website, social media. There's paid platforms. Ones are Thumbtack and Bark are two paid platforms to market your profile. So any... I, I doubt it took me years to figure out the marketing. So I, I would put that um, on the same level as your creative and technical skills. If you want to make a living doing photography, you have to market your work and put yourself out there. That's really awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your insight, your experience, um, your journey with us. Um, and thank you, of course, most of all for your time. Um, if you want to hear more about virtual student experiences, visit our website at virtualstudentexperiences.com. Um, and again, thank you very much, Ms. Stringfellow, for being You're with welcome. us here today. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And that's all we have for you guys today.